I'm already imagining myself forgetting to seal up the leftovers. I really do hope that Color Street comes out with skincare and foundation powder. Those are like, ooh, and eyebrow powder. I use eyebrow powder for my eyebrows because my eyebrows just don't stand out. They're bushy, but they don't stand out on my face. So I need a little bit of eyebrow powder to kind of make it stand out. And so it would be really awesome if Color Street came out with that stuff because uh, I'd be able to support my sister-in-law, Carla's business, and still get my makeup fix. Right now I use Anastasia Beverly Hills, their eyebrow powder, and it's really good. I love it, but... A little bit pricey, and if Color Street were to come out with the same product, same price point, I would definitely switch over. I've used their regular mascara now, which I actually really like. It's so easy to take off, um, and I haven't had any issues with like the panda eyes, the raccoon eyes. Uh, I have oily skin, as I mentioned. And uh, sometimes that causes the dark circles under the eyes when wearing mascara on the bottom lashes. But Color Street seems to hold up okay. For weird reasons, the waterproof one was actually the one that caused me to have like a little bit of like smudging under uh, my eyes. Uh, but of course, I tested it for sweat, crying, like ugly crying, like lots of tears, uh, and all that. And so it actually lasted through that, except the oil on my skin sometimes, uh, doesn't play well with mascara, which is why, like, I didn't have like a set mascara that I loved and used and was loyal to. Although the brand Essence that is, uh, Ulta has at their stores is a relatively inexpensive inexpensive brand for mascara and their princess lines there are really like one of my favorites so for a good price point those are it but right now because I have the color street ones I'm gonna be using them for a bit and I don't know if I'll repurchase or not. If I'm repurchasing, I know that I am going to be supporting my sister-in-law's small business. And so I might still do that, but I don't know. It depends because price is important. What I do love about the Color Street uh, makeup line right now, their blush balm, their bronzer balm, and their highlighter balm are the bomb. <laughs> like, I really love using them for like a, like I mentioned, a natural, no makeup makeup look. And Panda Bear also uh, seems to think the same. He loves when I do my makeup that way. So highly recommend those if you are looking for makeup and maybe you're not like a makeup connoisseur. Like maybe you're a novice at makeup and you just need it for special occasions the balms are wonderful of course that's my opinion and you could take it or leave it uh, I'm fine either way life goes on but yes and if you don't have a color street stylist I welcome you to support my sister-in-law I will have her link below 
which I always do. I'm excited about the color play box that is on its way. It's a Halloween kind of spooky vibes called Gothic Beauty. Um, but I don't know. I only got one of them because I realized that I don't need to get two. Um, speaking of Gothic Beauty, so Jeffree Star Cosmetics came out with their latest which was a gothic beach collection. So it makes me think that, you know, makeup trends, nail trends, all of that, fashion trends, they all kind of all like, everybody follows the trends somehow. So, I mean, what are the odds Fa Park and Color Street throw out gothic beauty and then Jeffree Star with his gothic beach. Oh, snap. Did I do this wrong? <gasps> no. Not mirror image. Can I move that? Is it going to... Ah, forget it. Whatever. It is... It's already down. I... Ah! <laughs> this is what I get for talking too much and not paying attention. Ah! Okay. Enough. Enough throwing a tantrum. Um, But back to Jeffree Star Cosmetics gothic beach... I kind of, sort of, low-key want to try their liquid eyeliner. Um, if you're watching this and you actually use Jeffree Star Cosmetics, I know I'm in a Facebook group uh, about it. Uh, I would love to know if the liquid eyeliner is worth the purchase. Because my absolute favorite liquid eyeliner that I use is from the brand Stilla. Uh, or Stila, Stila, uh, and that one I know I really enjoy, but you know, it's also pricey, but if the Jeffree Star one is good, I will want to purchase that one uh, during the holiday season as a Christmas gift to myself. So I'm going to wait a little bit and hope and pray that it's not going to sell out. Uh, but if it's good, I want to try it. So that's on my next wish list of makeup items because I don't currently have a good liquid eyeliner and I haven't repurchased the Stila one because I have been kind of on a low buy, no buy when it comes to Sephora and Ulta. I used to buy way too much makeup and it's like, I don't wear makeup every day. So why... Why am I wasting my money on that? And so now I'm a little better about it. Most of my money gets spent on Color Street. And I do need to have new... Now that we're... Things are opening up more and we're actually like traveling for business and meeting with clients and stuff like that, I need to refresh my business attire wardrobe uh i i'm definitely gonna dust off a bunch of my business attire clothing but you know classic pieces will never go out of style so not an issue there but those pieces that i have that are you know not as classic it's time to retire them or at least store them away until the fashion trend comes back um, which, as you guys may notice, it does because 90s clothing and makeup looks are coming back. Um, so, yes. All right. Got my thumb and then we are done. I think I'm not going to use Roaring Time because, again, the whole no mirror image is really bugging the heck out of me. Uh, Color Street, if you could just get on board with creating mirror image strips. I would love that. Oh, and I was really, really sad. The Encoco lasted so well on my nails. Uh, the only reason why I took them off was because I needed to do this mixed mani for uh, honoring Shannon today. 
Uh, otherwise, I would have kept my the current Manny I did. Uh, I would have kept it on because it was not even a chip. There was barely any grow out. It was amazing. I have not had a Manny look so good for more than three days. Like I was, I was just like I took pictures too. I took pictures so that I can show you all how really awesome looking it was, still was because it it was it was beautiful all right i think i'm gonna do just plain red no i need to i need to be able to mix the gold and the red and the black because that is what i was doing so perhaps i can do red first lay the red down Throw the black on. Yep, let's do it. So I'm going to use this one and lay the red down. And it doesn't have to cover the whole nail because we're going to lay the black. First though, do I want the red showing or the black showing on this side? I think I want the red. doing my thumbs. See how there's that wrinkle? These wrinkles, I can never do them right. Not with solid colors at least. It's it's a pain. At least I can layer some glitter over it at the end. That will be the saving grace is the glitter. But yeah, the Encoco Japan I mean, it's supposed to be coming out of the same warehouse as Color Street is made, so you would think that the quality would be exactly the same, but I feel like it's better. It was better. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if anyone else, if you've used the Encoco Japan compared to, like, Color Street, like, comment below, like... Do you think it's better or is it the same? Am I just imagining things? Or was it like truly like better? I felt like it was better. But, but yeah. All right. So I want to lay the black and then I want to lay a strip of gold lining that black. Oh, I was going to leave the red on this side, wasn't I? And I totally did it the wrong way. Oh, no changing it now. <laughs> oh my god. Wendy, where's your brain? Um, I think I need some coffee. I woke up this morning and I did a little bit of work for work. Because I'm like, I need it since I'm going to be doing something like for business and I'll be away from the office that means that that's like a lost day for me as far as getting my to-do list done and so I have to make up for that by doing some weekend time putting in some time on the weekend to get stuff done otherwise I will lose my mind because there's not enough time in a day like <laughs> Someone sent me, I won't say who, but someone sent me a Instagram video um, where it talked about corporate math. And I, I have to tend to agree um, with that that video. And it's sad, but it's, it's 
the reality of the corporate world. So, but don't take that as I don't like my job. I actually love when my team and I succeed in completing our projects and getting stuff done. But at Amy's Tupperware party, it did ask, there was a post asking if we could have any job in the world, what would it be? I would love to be a food critic. Pay me to go try foods at your restaurants or comped my meal so I could try foods at your restaurants and give an honest review. That would so be my, like, ideal. My ideal uh, career. Ooh, was I going to put Panda? I I said I was going to put Panda, wasn't I? Oh, shoot. Do I put Panda on this now? I feel like it doesn't go. Sorry, Panda. We will save you for later. Yeah, I won't go. So, we will save that for another time. Um, but let's put Crystal Couture in here. I know I'm going to have to do a little bit of cleanup work on the thumbs. Because look at that. It's like... I don't know what I did there, but it's messed up there. So, I will need to fix that. But yeah, I would love to be a food critic. To travel the world try all the different like popular dishes of a restaurant and then write my reviews like I already do this for free on Yelp for certain restaurants that either deserve a five star or uh, businesses I shouldn't say it's just restaurants but um, businesses that deserve a five star or if they deserve a one star um, it's hard for me to write reviews where it's anywhere in between. And I think that's what's wrong with like the algorithm of uh, Yelp or the, the results of Yelp too. Like I'm sure there's other folks out there like me where it's like, okay, if you had a horrible, horrible experience at a place um, and you want to warn people about that place, you'll be willing to take the time to write a review of how bad that business is. And then on the flip side, if you had an amazing uh, experience at a business or restaurant, uh, you want to also give them five stars so that they can generate more business. But it's the in-betweens, the twos, the threes, the fours. I rarely give those out. Um, and I don't know why it is. I guess it's like not worth my time perhaps to write out a review for something like that. But right now, like if I want to be completely honest about the Get Fit Factory, uh, organization, like organizing, like timeliness uh, is one thing that I'm like a stickler for. Panda Bear could tell you that it's like one of my pet peeves is running late uh, or not, you know, being right on time. If you are on time to a meeting, you are technically late. Like, you should be there like a minute before the meeting starts so that nobody's having to wait for you. That's my opinion. Um, so, back to the Get Fit Factory. So... One of the things about the Get Fit Factory is that I've noticed that some of the classes run like longer and overlap into the next like class um, that's supposed to start. So I feel like they need to like schedule it so that the classes aren't like on top of each other. Like even if it's changing it for like half an hour later, like if there's a 5 p.m. class, rather than have like 5 p.m. and then 6 p.m. you would do like 5 p.m. and then like 6:15 or or 6:30, so that you're not like overlapping the classes and folks are having to wait for the class that is finishing up um, to be done before you start your class. So 
I know that the owner of Get Fit Factory uh, said that if I write a Yelp review, uh, she would give me a free class. I'm just, I don't want to write a bad review for them only because I really enjoy going there. Um, and it's not like I would write a bad review. I would give them a solid four. But four is a number in Chinese that is like death. It sounds like death. And so four is not the best number. And I definitely don't want to give Get Fit Factory a three because they're deserving of more than a three. And so that's where my uh, dilemma lies. Like I can't write a review for them. Um, but I will talk about them because I do want them to get more business. Uh, it's a really nice place to go to get a workout in. And I've enjoyed my time when I've gone. Um, but also the, some of the classes that I do like are not related to get fit factory, even if they are, um, being hosted at their studio. So I love taking Susan's classes. Shout out to Susan uh, with Dance Fit. And um, if I could write her a review, I would write her a review. <laughs> so, so that's where I'm at right now as far as Get Fit Factory. I love going. I wish I had more time to go. Um, but they only have classes at certain times and I'm still getting used to my current new schedule of having like earlier days. So, so yeah, but the instructors at Get Fit Factory are really nice. I really like Alfred's classes. He incorporates a little bit of cardio kickboxing in his classes and I love that. I miss... I used to have a 24-hour fitness membership when I used to work for a law firm before my current company I work for, and I used to take their turbo kickboxing classes, like, religiously. Like, they were my classes. I loved them so much. And then the gym that I used to go to when I was going to a gym uh, had, like, hip-hop dance classes that weren't the groove hip-hop classes that Susan teaches, but they were still hip-hop classes, and I love those too, so. And then Zumba is always really fun. I hadn't done Zumba very much, um, but my sister, Michelle, when she signed me up for all those classes at her gym when we were in Utah, uh, I fell in love with taking Zumba, so. So, Yeah. I'm glad that Get Fit Factory offers those classes because uh, I'm able to take them. Plus, I'm also glad that Carla, my sister-in-law Carla, is willing to do at-home Zumba classes with me um, by looking up YouTube videos and doing them. Her daughter, Amaryllis, thinks we look silly doing the classes because we're two big women uh, trying to dance and and lots of body parts jiggling, I'll tell you that much. Um, but I have so much fun and I, I told Lilith, I'm like, I don't care if you think we look funny, uh, we're having fun. You're the one who's uh, not having fun. <laughs> So, so they're there. <laughs> when you reach four decades old and older, you don't give a rat's ass what people think. It's really what you think of your own self. And truly, that is the freedom of getting older is not caring and in a good way. <laughs> With that said, oh my gosh, what? Three parters, but you know what? Three is my favorite number. Three is the magic number. Schoolhouse Rock. And this is my final look. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did watch all three parts, kudos to you, man. Marathon, marathon mixed Manny chat for you. And uh, let's see. If you watch part three all the way through, let's have you put a uh, fish any kind of fish uh, down in the comments below, a fish emoji, and, and why not, a heart. 
fish and heart emoji. Let's do a combo. Fish and heart emoji. So I know that you watched all of part three. Um, and that is all. So until next time, I'll see you guys. Peace.